Hey, this is Chuck, and you are listening to Fans with Bands, the podcast where we talk to the fans and the bands they dig about life, music, and whatever the hell else we want to talk about. Today on Fans with Bands, we are talking to Fernando Solis. Check it out. Hey, this is Chuck with Fans with Bands, and I'm talking to Fernando Solis. Fernando, how are you doing? Hey, not bad, Chuck. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Yeah, thanks for being on. <laughs> and we've got a fan, Viv. Viv, how are you? I am doing well. How are y'all? Uh, we're doing great, and we're happy that you're on here, too. This is great. Uh, that's kind of what it's all about, is to make sure we have some fans on here, too. So it's cool. Um, so, Fernando, you were so kind to send me your music for the three EPs that you've got coming out. So the one, um, When the Good Starts to Fade, is already out. That came out in May. Then you've yeah. got... Uh, somebody that you keep around, which is coming out in July, I think the twenty second, mm-hmm. and then you got it. Yeah. All your favorite haunts is coming out in September on the twenty third, and so there are all these. Yeah. There, it feels like a, a. Well, first off, I just want to say that your music is beautiful. I, I love it. It's like what I like to think of it as like beautifully sad with these little shooting stars of hope. I feel like there's notes in there oh, wow. that, that 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 feel like there's it's hopeful, even though you know. It, you know, it's about relationships falling apart, people um, moving away, you know, things that maybe aren't going your way, but um, the arrangements are just so varied and nuanced. Um, it's just really great, awesome music, and I'm happy you're here to talk with me about it. Wow, that's, that's really, that's a really, uh, a lot of, a lot of, layers to that compliment there. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't always know how to, re- I don't always know how to react when people, you know, compliment me. And that's, that is always like the most difficult thing when, when like, you know, um, well, making music, being creative, yeah. I'm sure, you know, it's like, yeah, I made this thing and it'd be cool if people check it out. But then when someone's like, no, like, I really like this and for whatever the reason yeah. it's, uh, it, and I never really know how to react and, and it's something I <laughs> kind of struggle with. So I try to, I try to just say thank you, but I never <laughs> feel like that's an, that's enough, you know, right. because it's like, I don't expect it. It's just kind of like, oh, I hope you dig it. Oh yeah. my God, you said this incredible thing. <laughs> I never thought it was, I know, you know, you just kind of, it's just how you feel about something or a way of speaking. And, and when someone connects to it, it's, it's really impactful. You know, you don't, um, I could ramble. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. That's all good. You know, I, I was, you know, I, I love, I like the fact that you, you chunked it up into basically every couple of months, you're going to get some music um, as to just one release. So you've got a little time to like get acquainted with the songs. And I know that you've had these songs out there for a while. You've obviously had it produced for a while. And I was, I was curious back into the time of when you were, um, when you had them all ready and you've, you'd perform them uh, for the recording. Which one was the hardest one for you to write and record? And what was it about that that made it challenging for you? Oh, man. Um, The one that was the hardest to write and record, you know, that's, that's really challenging for me to answer because I never really know what I'm getting myself into when I sit down to write. Mm -hmm. Um, I go through uh, like writer's block often. And, and maybe it's, maybe it's not writer's block. Maybe it's a lack of discipline because I, I tend to get all over the place with how to be creative and what I want to do. Yeah. Um, but I, I think as far as like putting honesty into it, putting as much authenticity into a song, mm-hmm. I think, you know, um, when the good starts to fade um, was definitely one of the harder ones to write. Um, that one, and uh, pairs, which hasn't been released yet. That one won't come out until I believe, I believe that one's coming out in September. Yep, that's a um, September release. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those two were were really difficult. Um, sometimes when I'm writing, uh, like I said, I don't really know what's going to come out. Um, it might be just I'm playing around with the guitar chords, or there's a melody that I have. And I'm guilty of being the type of musician that on a is my way into a song. <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm just going to make noises and play guitar or yeah. some, or sometimes like, I'll just, I'll think of something. There'll be like, I'll just have a thought and reference to a memory or maybe something I've seen or reflecting on and I'll jot it down, you know, whether it's some notes app on my phone or on a piece of paper. And then I'll, I'll think, you know, this was this, 
these words felt impactful enough that I wanted to jot it down. So maybe I should see what else is surrounding it. And it becomes ther like therapy for me. Um, but they're both about um, this concept of letting go of something or someone that maybe you're not ready to, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and coping with that. Uh, so yeah, I think that's, that's why those are difficult. And they're from, they're diff from different time frames and different perspectives. I wouldn't say they're necessarily entirely attached to a romantic uh, type of relationship, but just something that something or someone that you're really closely bonded with. And it's, it's that period, like that fork in the road where yeah. you're not going to, you're not going down this road together anymore. You right. Know? right. So. And uh, you kind of touched on uh, my next question, which is about your songwriting. So uh, is it, is it basically that you start off with uh, the musical ideas first um, and then try to fit some lyrics to it? Or do you have like fully formed, you know, lyrical ideas and you're thinking, all right, I got to find some music that fits this. It's changed over the years. Um, when I was younger, I definitely would spend time with a notebook. I would go, to, <laughs> I would go sit at a Coney Island or a diner for yeah. anyone who's not familiar with what a Coney Island is to <laughs> us in Michigan. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I would sit down, I'd get some coffee, and then I would spend, you know, you know, at least an hour, if not more, just free thought, just writing, and it yeah. wasn't necessarily there was you know poetry or lyrics it was just i'm going to write down thoughts and ideas i'm going to play with words and see how they fit together and create different uh, different you know types of images and scenery um and then as time went on i you know i, I don't know if it's just because of my life schedule at this point mm -hmm. um but now I, I just i don't do that as much anymore i i, I feel as almost as if i i don't know if i have the time to sit down and free write so now I, I will just say, this is the time I'm setting aside to write music and I'll yeah. pick up a guitar or I'll, I'll get on my computer and I'll just start playing with chords and putting notes together. And sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's pretty straightforward, like the chord progressions and other times, I'm, you know, I used to play in like punk and hardcore bands. So, so sometimes I'll just start messing with notes and making things intentionally sound ugly. And I'm like, I don't yeah. know, I should do that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but whatever's going to get my, whatever's going to get my brain moving, you know, right. and then, um, <clears throat> And then I'll just start saying things out loud, start talking to myself out loud, I, I guess. <laughs> so if I don't have any ideas written down like that I can reference, I'll just start saying things like, oh, this is weird, or that sounds uh, like yeah. I'm mad about something or offensive, or maybe that's right. uh, a type of relief or whatever it is. And and uh, I, I just, I must look crazy when I'm writing. I don't know how other musicians do it. Like I've been <laughs> in bands before, you know, and yeah. usually like the songwriter will come in and they'll say, I wrote this song. Yeah. You know, and we all would jam to it. Or if I was the songwriter in the band, you know, I'd bring it to them. But I, I don't know what anyone else's process looks like. Yeah. So I, I'm just glad I don't have cameras inside of my house. <laughs> or maybe I do. You know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That could I'm be... sure I, like the phone's a camera, right? The computer's a camera. <laughs> Who knows, right? Right. That could be interesting. Watch, you know, yeah. see the, the uh, creation process in action. <laughs> I Yeah. I I make jokes with, with one of my friends, you know, that... Uh, <laughs> like, oh man, my FBI agent's gonna be really weirded out by that last part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the profiler's gonna be looking. Hmm, I don't yeah. know about this part right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, <laughs> so, or, uh, or like when I, I'll get sorry. <laughs> go, oh, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna say, or sometimes I'll get. I, I love really. I, I love pop music a lot. Yeah. Um. And it's not something that I feel is as heavily influenced in my songwriting. Um, a little bit. I think it's definitely sprinkled in there. But, I mean, I'll, I'll get on these repetitive loops. Like, I, I probably listen to Return of the Mac, you know, for a whole day straight before. Just because I, I was like, man, these listen to them. Go, you know. Like, there's so many different types, <laughs> types of feelings in, in Return of the Mac. Like, he was wronged, but now he's triumphant, and this is his return. But he's expressing his sad and broken heart, but it's okay. He's coming out on top. Like, yeah. wow, Return of the Mac really sums it up. Look at <laughs> and then I'll I come down from this like manic high of like this song I'm obsessed with. I'm like, what am I you know, like? What am I doing here? Like, I even I even called the uh, my friend who helps me produce the, our, the songs, and when I you know when I go record, and 
I texted him when I was like, Hey, I got, I, I've got this old country version of return of the Mac that I just put together. We got to record it. I think like the next day I'm like, maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't do that. But, <laughs> you know, so my FBI agent would definitely be weird. That I was like, uh, <laughs> once he get reassigned, I'm sure. Right. So, so, uh, a question about like the recording process for this, um, for these EPs, um, wh- you know, what was that like for you and who was involved? Um, because I love, there's a couple of t- tunes with, uh, I think one hit tune is banjo. Um, and there's steel yeah. guitar on a couple of tunes and that's killer. I love steel guitar. Yeah. Um, so the, okay. So as far as recording and, and engineering and producing, um, I have to give, you know, so much credit to my friend, Nick Diener. Um, Nick used to be in the band, the Swellers and also uh, the apology tour. Um, and we're both, uh, you know, Flint natives. Uh, he, he grew up in Fenton. Um, and, but I guess what I mean by Flint natives is, is like for him, even though I grew up in the city, I st- he's still a part of this music scene. You yeah. know, this is where the scholars got their start. This is where I met him. We went to the Flint local downtown when we were like 15 or 16. And, um, you know, uh, we've just watched each other grow as musicians. And um, uh, he, he was very fortunate enough to like tour the world with his band and stuff. Um, and eventually settling down with the family um, in uh, Chesney, Michigan. Uh, so not in the city at all anymore. And yeah. he a tour. He's got two, two beautiful kids. Nice. And uh, he, he he went back to taking recording very seriously, and so I hit him up, and I was like, "Hey, I got some songs, you know. It's if you want, if you're down." And he had me come out, and he, um, it's you know, it's really it's really interesting when when you find that person that clicks with your vision, you know. Um, and that's not to say that I didn't click with uh, anyone in the in the past, like it's just, it's interesting to see like the evolution or like how, when people paired up the types of music that they make, Um, you know, so Nick Diener, he, he really had a huge hand in helping me find the sounds and, and, and what the, I guess the, the final touch on how the songs would turn out before being released. Nice. Um, Yeah. He, he led in uh, his brother, uh, Jonathan Diener uh, or John O'Diener. Some people call him Jono. Um, Also, Flint native was in the band, the swellers, their brothers, you know, and, nice. uh, he now runs a, a coffee company uh, called rootless coffee. Cool. And I'm just doing these shameless plugs for all these. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> we had him come out and, and, uh, it was actually, uh, by chance that he ended up drumming on the tracks, uh, on like the, the first EP I put out in 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, I never intended to have full band production on it. Um, but he showed up to the house just, to do something and he was like let me see if he'll play drums on this really quick <laughs> and <laughs> and he did i'm like okay so after that it was like yeah hey, you want to complain some other songs and you know time went on and we had him on these tracks as well um but yeah between those two that's that's the majority of the additional instrumentation that we worked on um with uh the the, the pedal steel though that is all the way from australia Oh really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is kind of strange because you, yeah. you you think you might like reach into like there's definitely some pedal steel players in Michigan that I I didn't know about at the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, or you would think like Nashville, you know, reach into that pool, you know, right. see who you can find out there. Um, but I, I uh, as much as I love that sound and that instrument, I, I guess I I approach songwriting and recording with like a sense of urgency. Like I I know that. I guess from my past experience, staying too attached to whatever song that I'm working on could mean I'll have like <laughs> three songs that I'm perfecting for three years. Right. You know? <laughs> so, uh, so now I, I've, I've gotten to a point where I'm like, once it's done, demo it. If you feel good about the demo, get it out. Just get it out because if not, you're going to revisit it, revise yeah. it, rewrite it. And, uh, and so I never thought to put a uh, lot uh, pedal steel on it until I had there's an artist out of um, Australia named uh, Charlie Collins and um, now we don't know each other like personally other than mm-hmm. like a couple of DMs back and forth when I was asking about their music stuff out there yeah um, but she's she's an, an incredible songwriter she has this really cool like uh, 
I mean, it's almost like imagine Fleetwood Mac with like the vocal style reminds me of like some kind of like eighties pop in a way. Oh wow. So it's like this strange like longing like it's almost like there's like twang to it, but then there's like a pop sensibility it, and it caught my attention just because I'm like, like I said, I'm a sucker for pop music. So if I yeah. hear something that's catchy and like has a certain tonality to it, I'm like, this is cool. Yeah. And you know, um, when I was grounded in the internet for different music, uh, I came across her account. I, I, I looked her up on Spotify. I was like, man, I really, really like her, her stuff. So uh, I started following her on Instagram and she shared uh, some videos of her and, and live bands at the time. And she had tagged this account called steel and hearts. And it was this guy that played pedal steel. And I'm like this, and this, I mean, this is, <laughs> uh, J- Jai Perry uh, is his name. And he is one of the coolest looking dudes I've ever seen in my life. Like, <laughs> I mean, just this country Western rock star sensibility. I mean, I've, I, I kind of copped a little bit of his style for some of my <laughs> more recent live shows because I thought it was so cool. Like, but yeah, I had to give him full credit for the track, the Adidas track suit with cowboy boots. <laughs> you wouldn't think it works, but it is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And and so I, you know, he he had posted that he he's you know he'll oh, collaborate with your tracks. Just send him a DM and and uh, yeah, I showed Nick. And wow. he was like, we got to get him. We got to get him on these songs. And so, yeah, so we got him on some of the songs and it, he's incredible. That, yeah, really that is. Yeah. It, it really adds a nice little touch to, uh, I'm trying to remember what song it is. I think it's happy new, happy new year. Um, um, and maybe are you happy? Uh, um, pedal steel. I know we've had that on when the good starts to fade that mm-hmm. track. And then I know we had it on, um, get back which isn't released yet, but it's coming oh, out in, yep. in uh, yes. July 22nd. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I was looking over at my note. Love the steel guitar. <laughs> I, I have no, I have notes too. I, I can't keep <laughs> it's my own songs. I'm like, what did I, what did I, yeah, what did I do what with did this? I do? <laughs> yeah. It's been yeah. a long time. So, uh, so fans with bands is, is more than just me talking to Fernando. Um, we've got Viv and also Helen has joined. Helen, can you hear us? Oh, Hey, she looks like she's muted. Uh oh. Well, Helen, if you, if you find the unmute. Um, so, uh, Viv or Helen, do either one of you have uh, some questions you want to ask Fernando? I think I know where both of these people are from. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny. There's like a whole, this is like the music side of stuff that I do. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Helen's from TikTok. Oh. But I can't, I can't verify until we hear. <laughs> Uh, well, it looks like she's still, so Viv, do you have any questions? Well, first I'll say I'm an anxious enough individual. If I knew that I was participating, I probably would have come better prepared, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that I was looking at today was even just like the artwork on your, um, either singles or your EPs. Um, who does that artwork? It's pretty cool. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, I wish, I, I, I wish that I could um, do visual art, so I never do it myself. <laughs> but uh, um, so for the more recent releases, you know, um, the three releases that we were talking about today, um, um, when the good starts to fade, and somebody that you keep around, and all your favorite haunts, um, I had all three of these single or these EP uh, designed by English Prevo. Uh, so if I mean, I'm trying to think of her Instagram name or I think it's English Prevo art. Um, I'll make a post with, with her tag in it though. So if you're cool. following them, you can check out her stuff, but she did the most recent pieces and I'm, and I'm really, really, really excited about this. Um, English, English is an old friend of mine from growing up around here. Uh, she had moved out to, I believe she lived in Chicago for a little bit. And then she is now more recently living in New York. Um, and I mean, it's, she just makes incredible work. I've seen her work with other companies and other artists. And I, I just finally had the chance to reach out to her and say, hey, you know, I wrote these songs. Would you be interested in doing it? And, and 
it actually i have all of the canvases and I, I wish i would have brought them down they're upstairs oh. in, in an office but she sent them to me i have the actual the original physical format of each of each cover i'm like this is so wow. cool because yeah. like you know you in, in a world where everything is digital Did, like yeah. you actually have like this is the the original piece and uh she's just she's just really one of the sweetest people i've ever met and, and extremely talented um the previous artwork i'm I, you might be referring to uh the other pieces as well if you are referring to um i'm trying to think i couldn't love you forever keep your head high and there's one more song that for some reason oh quarantine 2020 <laughs> uh, that was a weird time uh <laughs> so those tracks and that, that art um those were commissioned from an artist out of, I want to say the UK it was. Um, but yeah, it was a, another similar situation to where I found some cool art on the internet and I reached out and said, hey, can I hire you? Yeah. And they were really cool about it. And the, I guess the coolest thing about these kinds of experiences is that I don't usually give too much direction to an artist on um, you know, what to create you know we might have ideas or themes mm -hmm. um, but i think the funnest thing about being creative is seeing how people interpret it uh, yeah. you know I, I i don't think that it's my job to tell someone how to feel and and i don't that's why i don't usually like to give too much information on songs as it pertains to my real life but that's at least that's that's fun for me too is 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 kind of listening to music as a listener and what it means to me at whatever point in my life that I come across it. It's, you know, I, I think there's some value in that. Like thinking about when you're in high school or oh, like yeah. it, when you get your first kiss or when you fall in love for the first time, these are all things that a songwriter shouldn't tell you what that song means to you and why it's just, maybe it was there or maybe someone put it on a mixtape. Right. You're, you know, old enough to get yeah. a mixtape, you know, what I mean? <laughs> or a mix CD, yeah, or, or now a playlist, play, a playlist right? right? <laughs> and, and that's that's one of the most amazing things about music. So that's what I want. I like to do that with artists that I work with. Is yeah. just here's here's some ideas, um, and then we'll, we'll hop on a couple of calls, and and then they walk me through their process. And that's one of the coolest things I get to be a part of is uh, as being a creator, watching someone else create. Like, wow, you're doing yeah. this, and like because you heard this oh well, thank you, <laughs> you know? yeah that's really cool i yeah. love that idea because um i think it is great and I, I think it would be like you said like super satisfying to see um just what somebody comes up with you know like the song may mean something to you as the artist who wrote it um but then and and especially to have a visual creation so it's not just like somebody taking a riff off of your music and building something onto it like musically but like taking a different medium and then creating something from your music i think that's very cool to just let them go explore and have fun with it so i i don't think people get to do it enough yeah you know? i think yeah i think it should be you know have you ever seen and i don't know if you've done this but um when you're performing live and a band has an artist there that's drawing a pic like painting a picture yeah that's super cool yeah <laughs> it's, uh, yeah there's uh i think her name is i i'm probably gonna butcher her last name uh first name's jenny last name's i think you pronounce it munch and i believe it's spelled m-o-e-n-c-h-e -E. uh -huh. and uh she's an artist in in my area here in flint michigan and there's um there's been a couple of events that I've gone to and one particular that stood out to me was there was a jazz band that I was watching one night and I look over and I saw Jenny was painting and I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know um, what it was, what she was painting at all. And, you know, at the end of the night I went over and said hello to her and I looked at her piece and she had done the whole band. Oh. It was just this incredible, incredible piece of work that she just did within probably an hour to an hour and a half. And I'm like, my mind's blown because I'm like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just a dummy with a guitar. You know, like, like, that's so cool, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering, so I like to get back to like um, artists, like or, origin stories. So what, what inspired you? What got you mentioned you had played in punk and hardcore, but what got you into music? Where, where did you start? Oh man. Um, I, I don't, I don't know 
what pushed me towards it? And, I, you know, it's all like what I can't remember as far as like, okay, so there's like the part of my brain that is very like, uh, it's like my, the logic side of my brain. And then there's a yeah. the part of my brain that's like, you know, big dreams and like looking for meaning in different things that there's probably no meaning because my logic is always fighting the like the creative side, you know? <laughs> so the logical side tells me you started playing music when you were about 12 years old, 10 to 12 years old, you received an acoustic guitar and then it sat in the house forever <laughs> because you couldn't <laughs> figure out how to play it. Right. And then you, and then you started to pick it back up. I started to pick it back up and I, I couldn't figure out still how to play it. But what I realized at that point is that I could learn bass lines on the yeah. acoustic guitar. I didn't have the dexterity to to form guitar chords yet. Um, I just still not very coordinated. <laughs> so, <laughs> I try to be. I try to be composed and coordinated, but I'm just chaotic mess, just holding it together <laughs> at yeah. any given time. And um, as I was learning bass lines, I you know I I I asked my parents. I was you know I didn't have a job or anything, or, and I asked them if I could you know, get a bass guitar like for Christmas or something. And they were, they were cool about it. You know, we got, uh, we got a Squire, Squire basses. I, I want to say it was like one of those starter packs, you know, it's oh, like yeah. a P bass yeah. with a little 15 little watt amp. amp. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, you don't need to buy a fuzz or distortion pedal for your bass. You just crank it, you'll blow the speaker and <laughs> right. it sounds good. And anyways, you know, it works. Um, but that's how I got started. I started playing bass. And um, when I was in high school, I had, two friends, two, two pivotal moments in my life um, and, and two very st strong influences. One of them was uh, my friend uh, Eugene Gill and the other one was Vanna Ward. And they both, the reason they were both impactful to me is uh, Vanna was the one who introduced me to the Flint Local 432. Okay. And um, for any, anyone listening or anyone who might hear this, that's uh, our all ages music venue in town and um and i remember being 15 years old and downtown flint was a ghost town back then yeah. it's really changed now like it's it's there's a lot of business a lot of businesses that didn't used to be there but you used to be able to go downtown when i was like 15 and just complete ghost town uh, the local was there which was actually inside of an old department store like they still had the old mannequins in the display windows you know <laughs> except except it was a punk rock venue so it's, it's like <laughs> it's like this weird place that people are just dropping their kids off <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's five bucks but you can right. serve alcohol so it's i guess it's safe yeah um and then there was like one other coffee shop that was downtown for the longest time and that was the first place that i went to that i saw i saw musicians playing that were not on tv that were not on the radio and the craziest thing to me about it was it wasn't just that there were people in town that were my age or a little bit older that were playing in their own bands yeah it's that there were bands that were on tour. There were bands that, you know, they came and went and they, you know, maybe they never became anything big. Right. But they were on tour. They came from another city uh, from across the country. And, and from my city, they were going to another one. And I'm like, you're doing it. And, and you're just, you're just calling places and like trying to get a show and trying to yeah. sell merch and trying to express yourself and connect with people. And, and, you know, for me, that's what I saw on that. And, and then, so that blew my mind. Um, and, and in that venue, that's where I saw like the suicide machines th for the first time, my chemical romance played there. Um, as I lay dying played there, uh -huh. I, I want to say Coheed and Cambria played there at one point too. Um, but yeah, a lot, a lot of like bands that blew up at, yeah. at different points in time, uh, played there and, and like to maybe like what 25 kids 50 kids <laughs> right you know a, a, a pack night was was 75 100 you know um they could i think there were definitely bigger shows than 75 or 100 but i remember i there's like someone has footage of the as alley dying show and i mean it, it's funny it's like it's it, it's a there's a lot of people there but i mean like i said like 60 people spread out in a huge room and there's like a circle <laughs> pit it right. doesn't look as crazy as like going to like something like warp tour or Ozfest right. or you know yeah or whatever but um so that's that's the first place i went to and it was because of vanna she was like you got to come to this place called the local and so i started going there and then my other friend eugene gill he um he got me into playing with a band um he he played electric guitar and he <laughs> 
he was like, and I had just gotten a bass and he was like, yeah. Hey, do you want to, you want to come over and jam? And, and sure enough we did. And, and I mean, we learned like misfit songs and like, <laughs> uh, like Slipknot, which, uh, I can barely play. <laughs> but, <laughs> so they challenged stuff like, like just Metallica and Slayer and all this crazy stuff. And, um, and he went on, he's, uh, the bassist of, uh, of King 810 actually. Now. Oh, all right. So, cool. Yeah. So it's, it, you know, like, that's what got me into it. Just knowing people that somehow were into music in yeah. some way, in some capacity. And it, it's like, I, <laughs> I made a post a couple years ago. It was like, <laughs> I went to one local show when I was 15 years old and made it my personality for like the next 15 years. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Like that's, that's just who I am. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's, it's, it's funny that you kind of got into like, heavier music but your music is definitely not in that genre and it kind of reminds you do you know um uh chris dupont i do yeah i don't know him personally but I, um he's isn't he from the ypsilanti or ann arbor yeah, area yeah 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 uh, um but when i talked to him i found out he had played in a hardcore band and you would not know it from that you know and no. you, you guys have similar kind of music stylings and i was just like wow how did how did you go from there to there <laughs> I was always a big crybaby when it came to music, though. I, I yeah. mean, it's term in, in regards to like the kinds of stuff that I I, I actually like loved. Love. I mean, yeah. uh, I I shouldn't say it like that. I loved all the stuff that I got to do, you know. Um, but it was one of those things where I was the bass player, right? Yeah. So what my what my guitar player friends were playing is what I was going to play, you yeah. know. And uh, and that was fine. Um, I got into other stuff too, you know, on my own. Like I was like I I, I used to love Less Than Jake. I still do. I still love Lesson Jake. I yeah. just don't remember the last time I like kept up Listen with their discography. Yeah. yeah, that's all. Yeah. Um, you know, all kinds of stuff. I like. I it's like I remember the first time going to Warp Tour when I was younger, and how mind blowing that was because going to the All Ages venue in Flint was like just a, a small thing. I hadn't even been to shows out in Detroit yet. You know, I right. just I'd only been to the Flint scene, and then. Um, and like the little suburbs around people throw like house shows and stuff. Right. right. But it's not like Detroit shows. And, uh, and so I went from those types of things to going to the, you know, warp tour and I show up and there's like, every stage has this band. And the first, the first band that I saw at the first warp tour I went to, I walked up and I didn't know, I didn't even know what stage I was going to, to walked up to a stage and there's huge crowd of people and Vanna was with me and she was like, we gotta, we gotta get, into the crowd i'm sure it's gonna go nuts in a little bit i'm like okay so it's like it's just, you know sea of people i'm like right. 15 years old I'm like what am i doing here? this is crazy <laughs> and i hear oh I, I hear like what was it i think it was like a, a fiddle I start playing i'm like what is what is going on you know and uh it just it, they start playing they start playing and then the drums kick in and the guitars start coming in and it's got that fast punk beat and everyone starts moshing and i'm like what kind of music is this and it was flogging molly it was the oh, first time awesome. i'd seen flogging molly <laughs> it blew my mind because i hadn't even listened to them yet i'm like what is this you know uh but i mean this is the kind of like weird like you know alternative kinds of music and styles that i was exposed to when i was younger other than that i i'd listen to like pop music or whatever it was on you know headbangers ball and stuff like that on yeah. mtv or like yeah. or like deaf marilyn manson deftones nine inch nails these things that were like commercially accessible when you're younger and all you have is, you know, the music videos, you know, especially watching at like one in the morning, you know, <laughs> and, and, uh, and then I go to these live shows and it's just like, you know, it's crazy. And one of the, oh, man, one of the wildest things that, the, the coolest things I've ever seen. And one of the, one of my favorite things about these alternative music communities is how like widely ex accepting they've been towards yeah. all kinds of people, uh, whether, you know, marginalized, uh, communities, you know, yeah. always, you know, really wholly accepted. And, um, it was, um, what was it? The warp tour that I went to, I remember there was, there was an opening in the crowd and there was, I saw some crowd surfing and they were getting, there was like a big gap and I didn't know what was going on. And, Oh, did I lose you? Nope. You're here. I guess. Okay, cool. And you know, I, <laughs> I see this big gap and then I see this, this look of fear in this guy's eyes who's crowd surfing over. And then 
he starts getting pushed the other way. And I'm like, what happened? And I said, I get a little bit closer. And uh, there was a person in a, in a wheelchair. And and I thought that was the coolest thing in the world because like, yeah. it's so difficult to have any kind of like, you know, handicap and be able to go to shows at, you know, accessible places. Right. But right. these kinds of environments were always made accessible for all kinds of people. And here, like you would never expect to see someone who couldn't walk in the middle of a mosh pit and be like completely like respected, right? Right. right. But I, I will, I will say though, I think the look of fear was because the person in the wheelchair was also wearing a helmet with a big spike on it. <laughs> yeah. so, so there was that aspect of it, but right. still, like, still the whole everything that was happening was super cool, you know? Yeah. I don't know. That's you don't get cool. to see things like that at your normal shows that you go to, right? Right. For sure. So we uh, we had a, a few other fans join. Uh, we've got Tom, David, and John. Uh, can you guys hear us? Hey, we can certainly hear you. How are you doing? Good. Uh, Tom, can you hear us? Hey. Hey. Uh, how about David? Yeah, that's me. I just... Uh, I oh, just okay. Go. All right, cool. <laughs> Excellent. So, <laughs> uh, you know, fans with bands is... Um, uh, you know, I've been, you know, talking with Fernando about his music and some questions, but um, it's also open to you guys. If you guys have some questions for Fernando, uh, does anybody have questions? Tom, David, John. And it's okay if you don't, you can just listen. And, <laughs> and I'm happy just listening for now, but if I think All of right. any, I'll make sure to ask them. Thank you, man. Thank All you. right, cool. Awesome. All right. So, uh, cool. so, so Fernando, if you were... Um, Oh, well, an another kind of origin thing, because we've kind of been talking about, you know, uh, Warp Tour and concerts and stuff. But what was the very first uh, album or CD or, or tape that you bought? And and why did you buy it? Oh, man. Yeah, plus wrestling promotion. Montgomery, oh, cool. Alabama. Hey, oh, man. I, th I think we're getting trolled. Gym. <laughs> Bring the whole family down for some sweet wrestling action. You got it with Stempler's <laughs> wrestling promotion. All right. Yeah! <laughs> Thanks, Big John. Money in the bag. Steel cage. <laughs> Hell in this town. Come on down. Man. Oh, boy. All right. Well, thanks, Big John. <laughs> You know, considering the different platforms I put this on, I, I kind of expected some trolls to, to roll through. And that's awesome. I, but I will, say, I will say that, like, as long as I can get a good laugh out of it, like, that's awesome. It is. That, that was that was awesome. I know. Uh, but, yeah. You know, wrestling is kind of coming back, too. Uh, I don't know. If, yeah. I just read an article about, like, how wrestling and uh, craft beer – are like doing these things. And I know that, I don't know if it, it's totally off topic, but um, Dark Horse Brewing out in Marshall, Michigan, yeah. just had this guy, um, Danny, who is, who's, uh, he's in a, um, shit, I'm forgetting the name of the band. It's a, a hardcore punk band, but he uh, also promotes uh, like amateur wrestling. <laughs> so they had Really? A, yeah, they had a wrestling thing out there. It was awesome. I, I I can never tell. You got it. Like... Wrestling is awesome. <laughs> oh, oh boy, that's that's awesome. Oh, let's see. What is this? What's happening here? Oh, I think I think we've got some sharing going on. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. There, oh. Oh, this John's. We've lost him. All right. Oh man. I was hoping he was going to draw like a wrestler or something. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> the whiteboard did not have anything to do with Schaeffler's wrestling promotion. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That is awesome. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Oh. John, where can we find out more? And the Zoom meeting you host will be held in Montgomery, Alabama. Jeff Wrestling! Excellent. Oh my God. <laughs> we can also be found on Google. Excellent. Is that, is that a thing? Is it, 
I'm gonna I don't Google know. It. I'm going to have to check it out, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm Googling right now. I hope I don't, right. I hope I don't disrupt. She- what is it? Scheffler's Wrestling? Yeah, I think it was. Scheffler's Wrestling. In Montgomery, Alabama. In Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> Lex Scheffler, Track Wrestling. Zach Scheffler. Oh. No, I don't. No? Man, I'm kind of bummed. I was yeah. kind of hoping there'd be some. Like, so- sometimes, sometimes you'll come across some like some random trolling that it's like, we'll, we'll take you to a site and you're like, Oh, they got me. Yeah. I wish I wouldn't, I wish I wouldn't have seen I that. I wouldn't have kind gone of there. But, right. No. Exactly. I think I, I, think I that- have been informed by a reliable source that our website is currently down for maintenance. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Oh. 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 John, I know you're, I know your pain because we're dealing with the same thing with my site. It was like, golly. Not fans with bands. Fans with bands is fine. We're on a different platform there because it's a podcast, but yeah. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> you can also purchase tickets at the box office at City <laughs> Hall, Montgomery, Alabama. Scheffler's <laughs> Wrestling. Yes. Well, <laughs> from Fernando, we got, we got totally hijacked there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh for God's that's sake. awesome. Yeah. So. Oh, man. <laughs> That's for the record. That's not my doing. Like I, I loved it, but I'm not. I don't. I, know. I kind of figured it wasn't. <laughs> oh my God's sake! <laughs> so, uh, so where were we? <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for it to happen again. Yeah. Is it going? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, so, uh, so yeah. What was your first album? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wish I could remember the name of the wrestling album. Do you know? Do you know how like back in like the eighties or nineties, like the wrestlers all did like this rap album? Did you know about this? Oh no. Uh-uh. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I think there's I think like Hulk Hogan is on it, and like Macho Man Randy Savage, and it's like it's it's really bad. It's, oh really? It's, yeah, I would definitely <laughs> recommend checking it out. It's one of my favorite things I've ever heard. Um, and by favorite, I mean like I don't have any recollection of what they said. I just know it, when I listen, I'm like, I can't believe they got away with this. <laughs> Like, <laughs> well, at that time, I think they could have done anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And didn't exactly. Uh, I think uh, what was his name? I don't know if he was a wrestler though. Um, they became governor of Minnesota. Um, the fuck was that guy's name? The album was called "Be a Man" by <laughs> Randy Savage. Yes, uh-huh. yes, that's it. <laughs> yes, and it's so good. It's so good because he, <laughs> like. Because we know what we know what Randy Savage looks like, yeah. but on the album cover, like he's like it looks like he's cosplaying as like <laughs> as someone cosplaying as Randy Savage as a rapper. It's it's really it's really wild. I love it. <laughs> I'm glad John was able to hop back in. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> incredible. So Fernando, have you ever seen like uh, wrestling shows? Uh, live? No, I haven't. I, w- I should, though. I feel like it'd be really intense. Like, I would. I think I'm yeah. to a point in my life where I'm going to do it. Yeah. Like, do you a- know where the best place to do it is? <laughs> Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> no? Oh. Uh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, you could do, like, some kind of, like, uh, tandem show where you have, like, um, you and then, you know, so you're doing some songs, and then in next we go to wrestling. That happened in Flint once. Oh, really? Someone bo- someone booked a show with a bunch of bands, and they had a big cage where people were fighting in it, and uh, and that was the one and only time they did. <laughs> but, but it was wild. I, I, I we got booked for a show. I don't remember what band I was playing at the time, but like yeah, I can play this outdoor show. It's it's like it's just going to be an alternative kind of thing. And I'm like, all right, not really getting any detail. Just like pumped that there was a show to go play. We show up, there's like a big like cage fight. That, oh, like they had different opponents. I'm like, all right, this is sick. Very cool. <laughs> oh Very my cool. God. Crazy. So if you could, um, yeah. um, so if you go like have a beer or a coffee or any, or whatever your favorite bre- beverage is um, with anybody, uh, either alive or dead, um, who would you like to, who would you like to talk to and have a, and share a beverage with? Uh, I would have to say Wesley Willis. Oh, cool. 
Wesley Willis blows my mind as an artist. Like, are you familiar with Wesley Willis? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, like that, it's like, he was so passionate about what he did. Yeah. He, he had like a permanent, he had a permanent knot on his head because his thing was he would headbutt his fans. <laughs> and, and like, I just, or, or Andrew WK, like these extreme yeah. kind of personalities. Like, I yeah. love these kinds of personalities. They're just like, so it, it was like, they're not even from this planet. You know right. what I mean? Like those two people, I would, pro- I would want to sit down and just like, I could just listen to them talk. Let's <laughs> do the, do their whole bit. It's like, it's right. just wild to me. You know, they're, it's, I don't know. I always like I, when I see other musicians performing or like doing their thing. I'm just like, wow. Like I, I feel like I'm just some dude, but you look like you're like this fucking star. Like you know, what I mean? like I'm always in <laughs> awe of other performers. I'm like, I'm just some guy. Yeah, all right, you know. <laughs> so, but those two, yeah, that awesome. would be awesome. Awesome. And, <laughs> and slightly related to uh, question, but um, if you could go play anywhere um in the world where would you go and who would you like to perform with so you could either you know be opening for them or have them open for you oh man um i actually got to do that um one of one of the artists that i have really enjoyed for a long time uh, mike kinsella from the band american football uh i got to open for owen um at the sanctuary last winter and that was really cool um i you know i think besides that i think it'd be really awesome to open for father john misty oh yeah cool father john misty is is like he's one of he's like one of those artists where i'm like you i don't i don't know if you realize you're on this planet or not (laughs) (laughs) like i i he does he's just one of my favorite things about him is that he creates this like uh he just kind of creates this it's almost like you're watching a play when you're watching him perform uh there's an episode of snl that he performed on and he starts the set off by like he's sitting at a piano and he's playing the song and in the recording there's there's laugh tracks that come in because he's kind of saying these like ironic things about um about you know what it's like living in the usa the song's called bored in the usa right and he kind of goes over like you know, taking prescription medication, but then you can't really live this functional life because it impacts the other bodily functions. And you're just, you're just trying to get by, you know, right. and it's, it's just terrible. It's like, it feels terrible. And it's like, but it's not depressing. It's kind of more of like a ah, kind of feeling. And when he's performing the song, he's sitting at the piano, which is how it starts. And then as the laugh track comes in, he then gets up and he's no longer playing the piano. He grabs a microphone. And he's like, kind of like crooning to the crowd as the right. piano keeps playing behind him. <laughs> so, and he's like, and then he's like sitting on the piano and being dramatic. And I'm just like, this guy's is, is something else. You know, like <laughs> who think like who thinks to do that kind of thing? It's like I don't know. It reminds me. It's not the same kind of music, but it reminds me of like watching a video of like Tiny Tim. Oh like, yeah. Tiny Tim is just, you know yeah. like it's not it's not that like Father John Misty's silly. It's just yeah. that they do this. I don't want to say it's, it's not a, I don't want to call it a bit because I don't think it's a bit. I think they're actually like, that's just how they express themselves. Right. Yeah. They do it in such a way that you are, you're like sucked into this world where you're like, what am I witnessing right now? (laughs) And like you question, you question them or you question yourself or both. And you're just like, and after they're done, you're like, what did I just see? (laughs) And that's, that's what I love about father John Missy. It's just like, that's how I, that's how I feel when I, when I see him perform and I'm like, this is so cool. I don't think I I don't think I'll ever get an opportunity to open for him, even if even if I became successful to like have that kind of tier level career. Yeah, because like our genres are like singer songwriter, but different enough it probably wouldn't work. But it would be cool. It'd be awesome. It'd be awesome. Yeah. So, uh, so what's next for the the rest of the summer and into the fall? I know you've got so we've got the two albums coming out. The um, uh, somebody that you keep around in July, and then. Uh, all your favorite haunts in September, but any, any other music on the horizon or any shows that you're going to do to promote the music? Yeah. Yep. Yep. July 15th, I'll be playing Porch Fest in Flint, Michigan. Um, July 30th, I'll be playing the Avenue in Lansing. And then uh, tentative, tentative date in October for Sorrow Fest which helps raise money for Suck It Suicide, which is a suicide prevention group yeah. out of Michigan. 
Awesome. Um, so I'll, I'll be performing at those different places over the next couple months. And along with that, I'll be going back to the studio. Um, I've, my goal is, <clears throat> I, I, I've tried the, the approach in the past in other bands to put a release out and tour. Yeah. And of course, when, when, you know, when the pandemic happened and as we get through it and navigate through everything and try to find where we're at as we keep going in life, <laughs> yeah. um, such a touchy subject. I never know how to I address know. it. When it comes up, I'm just like the thing that no one agrees <laughs> that on. Thing. But, yeah. <laughs> but we're all doing uh uh after going through all that and, and still attempting to create art and release it, um, I decided I I don't have an interest in doing the typical model of put a release out and tour off that release. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. Um I just want to create pieces of work, whether it's the music that I'm making or building a community online. And <clears throat> if I can get to a point where, um, you know, I can travel across yeah. the country more and do it again, like I used to, um, then I will. But for now, my goal is just to put out as much music as possible. And I want there to be a large enough catalog that when I do that, there's a little bit of something for everyone there. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So I'll be going back to the studio in September. As well. Awesome. Awesome, man. Yeah, that's I'm really that's, excited. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, well, Fernando, yeah. thank you so much for being on Fans with Bands. I really appreciate you coming on here and, and yeah, talking with me. Thank you for having me. Uh, I've just got one last question. It's controversial, and I'm not sure how Big John's going to like this one, but I want to get Uh-oh. your input first. And that is pineapple or no pineapple on pizza? Pineapple. Pineapple, pineapple all the way. is wholly unacceptable <laughs> on a pizza. <laughs> If you put pineapple on your pizza, you are not just a wussy. You are not just a pussy. But you will not be welcome at Montgomery Wrestling with Shepard Wrestling Promotions, baby. <laughs> All right. So we know about. Oh, we know no, it sounds like I'm going see- to I'll be seeing him in the ring. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, there could be a there could be a, a a grudge match because of the the pineapple versus no pineapple. <laughs> what have I done? What yeah. have I done? <laughs> hey, so uh, Viv, how about you? Pineapple, no pineapple. Still there? Oh, a hundred percent pineapple. All right. Yes, awesome. let's go, Team Pineapple. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes, pineapple all day, every day. Awesome. Uh, Helen, how about you? Such a little stinker. Oh, I'm all for the pineapple. All right. Excellent. On everything. All right. Fantastic. (laughs) It looks like it will be a 3v1 match (laughs) at Jeff Blur's Wrestling Promotions, baby. (laughs) And, and And Tom, how about you? We haven't heard from you, I don't think. Are you there, Tom? We're going to put Tom in the pineapple camp. Tom definitely likes pineapple. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, pineapple he, all yeah, he has it in there. All right. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I missed the first one. Of <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for being part of Fans with Bands. It's been awesome. Uh, Big John, we'll see you down in Alabama. <laughs> You're goddamn right you will. (laughs) Thank you very much for your hospitality. Enjoy the rest of your fun pack day. (laughs) All right, Fernando, thanks again. And I hope to catch a show sometime soon. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much, Chuck. (laughs) Bye, everyone. Take (laughs) take care. (laughs) Oh, my God. Thanks to Fernando, Viv, Helen, David, Tom, and Big John for joining me on this episode of Fans with Bands. This episode was a blast. We got to chat with Fernando about his new EP called Somebody That You Keep Around, coming out on July 22nd. And we got to meet Fernando's number one fan, Big John of Scheffler Wrestling in Montgomery, Alabama. Fernando has a show coming up on July 15th at Porch Fest in Flint. He also has another EP coming out in September called All Your Favorite Haunts. Be sure to check out all of Fernando's fantastic music and go see him live if you get a chance. See the show notes for all the details and links. These are tough times for everyone in the creative industries such as music. Your support of live streaming, purchasing music, and merchandise is critical. If you can help out your local artists, please do. If you are in the Michigan area, consider following the Playing in the Detroit Area Tonight Facebook page. 
It is a place for fans and bands to support each other and share our combined love of music. Thank you all so much for listening. Be sure to hit subscribe on your favorite podcast service to get each and every episode of Fans with Bands. Spread the word by rating the show and leaving a comment. We want to hear what you think. You can keep in touch by following us on social media. This is a Life in Michigan production. Until next time, be well and kick out the jams.